Hello and welcome back. So what I want to do today is talk about a component that is critical in any EMC test setup. It's a component that's needed in both emissions and immunity tests, both conducted and radiated. What I'm talking about, of course, is the Line Impedance Stabilization Network, or LISN in short. So what I want to do today is look at what this thing is, how it's built, why the components have the various values they have, but also I will want to build my own. So to have something to use in future videos. So if you're curious, then keep watching. Now, one of the main purposes of a line impedance stabilization network is to, well, stabilize the impedance of the line. So to provide a well-known impedance and to create a repeatable setup. Now, the various standards that describe LISNs usually focus on frequencies above 100 kHz. And the main reason for this being that the tests that you carry out, both emissions and immunity tests on your units, are done above this frequency. So what happens below doesn't matter that much as much as what happens above 100 kHz. So to start things off, the main real life setup element that the LISN is supposed to replicate is the supply cable. So when you're testing units with external power supplies, like a light bulb or a refrigerator or a car radio, usually you have your power supply somewhere and you have a cable that takes power from the generator to your unit. And above 100 kilohertz, the main electrical parameter that characterizes a cable is its inductance. So your LISN is a device placed between your generator and your load on the supply lines. And one of the main elements is a series inductor. And now the value of this inductor has to do with the use case. So in things like AC power distribution, the length of cable between your unit and your local generator, so your local power transformer, is in the order of tens of meters. So in that case, a common inductor value is 50 microhenry, which is equivalent to about 25-30 meters of cable. On the other hand, in battery powered applications, so like in automotive, cable lengths are much shorter, so you only have a few meters of cable, and there you will be using roughly 5 microhenries, which is equivalent to about 3 meters. Now, regarding the test setup, other than the inductance in the LISN, you will still have a bit of cable going from the LISN to your load, and this is usually established in the standard to have a short value. But on the other hand, the cable that goes from the LISN to the generator, whether it's the battery or again the local power transformer, is something that you don't always have control over. And this external inductance can have comparable values to your LISN inductor. So this will really mess up your measurements. So the next thing that needs to be added into your stabilization network is a local decoupling capacitor. So by adding this capacitor, you provide a local low impedance source from which you supply your unit, especially at high frequency, and this isolates whatever is before the LISN. So with the addition of this capacitor, this external inductance doesn't really matter anymore. Now we built a low pass second order filter. So the other benefit of adding this capacitor is that any noise that our unit will be creating is not going out the other way. But since we have a low DC resistance inductor and probably a low ESR capacitor, our LC filter can also have a resonance point. And to remove the risk of this, an extra resistor is added to dampen the LC filter and to prevent the resonance point. Finally, especially for conducted emissions tests, you will want to be able to actually measure the noise that your unit creates. So you want to see what sort of noise is on your input line. And for that, we have a DC isolation capacitor, so a capacitor that only lets AC noise out, you don't really care about the DC value, and to prevent this capacitor storing charge, commonly a resistor is added. So this is just here to prevent charge buildup. And finally, this line will be connected to your measurement equipment, so spectrum analyzer, into a 50 ohm input impedance. And now it's worth mentioning that if you're not using your spectrum analyzer, 
you still need this 50 ohm impedance and this will commonly be added as a termination resistance directly on the output port of the LISN. And of course you need to look at all the supply lines of your unit. So we will have another LISN also on the other supply line. And this is common for things like plus minus battery supplies or live and neutral for AC supply. And in case you have free phase supply, then all free phases will need one of these LISN networks. And basically these are the components that you need. But of course, the real life commercial products have a few more components than this. So now let's talk about some design specifications for my own version of the circuit. First of all, I normally work with low voltage DC circuitry. So the LISN that I would need is something that replicates short lines. So I will go with the 5 microhenry standard. Secondly, regarding currents, I usually work with low currents, so 3 amps should be more than enough. And also, since I need two LISNs for the two supply lines, and I want to keep things small and compact, I will want to have both of these in the same box. So I don't want to have two separate LISNs for the two supply lines, but rather have them both in the same enclosure. So let's start taking the components one by one and start with the inductor. Now for a five microhenry inductor, you can go with some sort of ferrite core inductor. So you have these in very small packages and they can handle quite a lot of current. But the magnetic core inductor has some drawbacks. First of all, the inductance of this sort of inductor is not that stable. I mean, even if you keep the current below saturation current, you might still get a variation of inductance with the applied current. And when you are talking about an impedance stabilization device, well, you want it to be stable. So an inductor that varies its inductance isn't really something you want. And for that reason, I will be going with an air core inductor. Now, the second important parameter for the LISN inductor is its capacity. So since an LISN is supposed to work up to high frequencies, so the 5 microhenry LISN usually is used up to 110 megahertz, you want your inductor to still stay an inductor at these frequencies. So you want something that has a very high self-resonance frequency. And this can only be obtained if the equivalent parallel capacity is very small. For this reason, the inductor that I will be building will be a single layer inductor. And to further reduce capacity, I will be stretching it out more than is really necessary based on the cable thickness. Now, from a structure point of view, I will be coiling my coils on two structure supports. So these will be made out of plastic. And to keep the turns at a certain distance one from the other, I also inserted this thread into the support. So with this, I know exactly how many turns I have and exactly what inductance should come out of it. Now to keep the distance between the two coils to a certain degree, I will also be adding these support plates. So these keep the constant distance. And now the two inductors are supposed to be isolated magnetically one from the other. Therefore, I will be also adding a shield around it. So I will have this sort of plastic support all around onto which I will be adding some copper tape which will act as a magnetic shield. So this way I can have both my inductors in quite a small space, but still shielded one from the other. So you don't get noise from one inductor into the other. And then the PCB with the rest of the components will be screwed through these holes onto this plate. So everything will be centered around these inductors. So now let's talk about the other components. So now let's move on to the components on the signal side of the LISN. Now, typically the values here are 100 nanofarads for the capacitor, one kilo ohm for the resistor. And we don't really have a reason to change on these values. But we can add a few more things. So this will be the schematic of the small PCB on the signal side of the LISN that I will be attaching to the coil assembly. So in the middle, I have the ground, the positive signal and the negative signal side. So these are the power lines. Then in parallel with the 100 nanofarad capacitor, I also did a small 4.7 nanofarad capacitor. And the reason for this is to expand the low impedance area of the capacitor. So to keep it capacitive on a wider frequency range rather than it becoming inductive. And then in parallel with the one kilo ohm resistor, I added these diodes. And the purpose of these being for transient limitation. So you can get transients the moment when you connect the supply to your LISN or when you're connecting a very large load. Now, 
these transients don't really affect the LISN, that will handle them without any problems. But if you have your spectrum analyzer connected to that port, well, for the short amount of time, you can have very large voltage signals that can damage the input. And you don't want to damage your spectrum analyzer. So some form of transient limiter, maybe coupled with an attenuator, should always be used. And well, on the other side, it's exactly the same. Now, regarding the components on the supply side of the LSN, so where power is coming into the LSN towards the load, there's no real standard values. I mean, if you look at various LISNs, say taking the capacitor, you will get values from just a few nanofarads up to a few microfarads. So any value will do really, as long as you can keep the output impedance within limits. Now coming back to the purpose of these components, what you want to do is build a filter that doesn't allow noise to go through the LISN back into the supply lines. So you will want to have a corner frequency of at least 100 kilohertz. So by that logic, you will need at least 500 nanofarads of capacity. But just to be on the safe side, we can go with 4.7 microfarads just to be safe. Now regarding the resistor needed to keep the system damped, well, we can go through the math or we can just simulate and do things the simple way. So let's do that. And for that, I prepared this little simulation. So I'm inserting an AC voltage signal into the circuit, I have my 100 nanofarad and 1 kilo ohm resistor and the 50 ohm load. So this will either be in your spectrum analyzer or a termination resistor, then the 5 micro Henry inductor, and finally the 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Now, if we put a very small resistor value here, so this would be the internal ESR of a good ceramic capacitor, and we check the simulation and look on the supply side. Well, we can see we have a corner frequency after which, well, the filter is filtering, so it's acting like a proper low pass filter. But right here at resonance, it's working like an amplifier. So the output is 35 decibels above the input. So it's clearly amplifying and we do not want this. So if we start adding values to this resistor, say we go with two ohms and we re-simulate, well, our resonance peak mostly disappeared, we still have about 1.3 decibels, but this is manageable. And again, in parallel with the 4.7 microfarad capacitor, we can add multiple small value capacitors just to reduce impedance at high frequencies. Now, one of the things you might see in various schematics regarding this input side is that other than the resistor and capacitor, you have another inductor and resistor and capacitor. And there's good reason for this. So on the one side, if your unit is very, very noisy, then you will want a higher order filter to prevent noise going into the supply lines. But especially when performing measurements where your supply is not a battery, but rather the AC network or some sort of noisy power supply, well, you want to filter that also. So you don't want to get noise coming from your supply into your circuit because that will add up with your circuit noise and you will not be able to make a correct measurement. So you can add an extra LC filter onto your LISN to help with reducing outgoing noise, but also incoming noise. And that's what I also want to add. So this is what my final schematic will look like. So this will be the small board connected on the supply side of the LISN. So to the right of this will be the five microhenry inductors, to the left, the supply connectors. And well, Starting from right to left, we have the 4.7 microfarad capacitor with some small capacitors in parallel, then the 2 ohm resistor, and then we have the extra filter built with a 10 microhenry inductor, so this can be a ferrite core, doesn't really matter if it changes value, so this does not influence the output impedance of the LISN, this is just for filtering. Then in series a ferrite bead, so for very high frequency noise, and then a couple 4.7 microfarad capacitors. So just to have a large ceramic capacitor buffer at the input so that very little noise gets into the LSN. So this is what the device looks like all assembled. So I assembled it beforehand. And well, it's built inside of a sheet aluminum box. On the top side, I have my two BNC connectors. So this is where the output ports are. I have some screws to hold the interior structure. Then on the supply side, so this is the part that will be connected to the power supply, I have the two supply lines and 
an earth connection, so this is connected to the casing. And I also added a switch so that the ground can be connected to this or not, depending on what is needed. Moving to the other side, we have the two connectors, so the two wires going through. And I also provided a connection to the case. Now, if we look inside the box, so first of all, this underside, I glued some magnets in place. So if I will be using a sheet steel table, then this will just glue to it. Now, inside the device, quite a lot going on. So let's start from the tested unit side. So this is where the lines go into the device. I have the two small capacitors, so the 100 nanofarad and the 4.7 nanofarad capacitor, then a small one kilo ohm resistor, and then right next to it are the transient protection diodes. And finally, this connects through a coax cable to the BNC connector. Then comes the inductor. So this is the outer shielding, but inside in there is the inductor. So I have the coils wound onto a plastic structure and then onto this comes the plastic casing onto which the shielding is finally added. So this is made with copper tape and just soldered together so that a very good connection is provided. Moving to the other side, so this is where the inductor comes out. Here we have the 4.7 microfarad capacitor with all the other small ones, then the 2 ohm resistor connected to ground. And finally the second stage filter, so with the extra inductor and ferrite bead, and then the extra capacitors to ground. And then of course this exits through the terminals, and we also have the connection to the small switch. And of course the ground from each board is interconnected through this sheet of copper that is also soldered to the shield. So the shield is connected to the ground to the case. So the LISN turned out quite nicely. I will be leaving a link to its schematic and the coil structure down in the description, so go check that out. And there's one last thing to do. See if it's any good. And that involves doing quite a lot of tests on it to make sure that, well, you can get reliable results out of it and that it behaves as expected. But that is a topic for a different time. So for now, hope you got some useful information out of this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos, and see you next time. Bye bye.